Edwards exploit. Edwards scolded the twins severely, but told Gordon it served him right. Gordon was furious. A few days later, some enthusiasts came. On their last afternoon, they went to the China Clay Works. Edward found it hard to start the heavy train. Did you see him straining? asked Henry. Positively painful, remarked James. Just pathetic, grunted Gordon. He should give up and be preserved before it's too late. Shut up, burst out Duck. You're all jealous that was better than any of you. You're right, Doc, said Boko. Edward's old, but he'll surprise us all. Bill and Ben were delighted with their visitors. They loved being photographed and took the party to the workings. in a break band special. On the way home, however, the weather changed. Wind and rain buffeted Edward. His sanding gear failed, his wheels slipped and his fireman rode in front, dropping sand on the rails by hand. Come on, come on, come on, panted Edward breathlessly. This is dreadful. But there was worse to come. Before his driver could check them, his wheel slipped fiercely again and again. With a shrieking crack, something broke and battered his frame and splashes up and out of shape. The passengers gathered round while the crew inspected the damage. Repairs took some time. One of your crank pins broke, Edward, said his driver at last. We've taken your side rods off. Now you're a single. Like an old-fashioned engine. Can you get these people home? They must start back tonight. I'll try, sir, promised Edward. They backed down to where the line was more nearly level. Edward puffed and pulled his hardest, but his wheels kept slipping and he just could not start the heavy train. The passengers were getting anxious. Driver, fireman and guard went along the train making adjustments between the coaches. We've loosened the couplings, Edward, they said. Now you can pick your coaches up one by one, just as you do with trucks. That will be much easier, said Edward gratefully. So with the fireman standing carefully in front, the driver gently opened the regulator. Come on, puffed Edward. He moved cautiously forward, ready to take the strain and his tender coupling. As his tender coupling tightened against the weight of the first coach. The first coach moving helped to start the second. The second helped the third, and so on down the train. I've done it! I've done it! puffed Edward, his wheels spinning with excitement. Steady boy! warned his driver, skill, skillfully checking the wheel up. Well done, boy! You've got them! You've got them! And he listened happily to Edward's steady beat as he forged slowly but surely up the hill. The passengers were thrilled. Most had their heads out of the windows. They waved and shouted, cheering Edward on.
The fat controller paced the platform. Henry with the special train waited anxiously too. They heard a peep peep. Then, battered, weary, and un but unbeaten, Edward steamed in. The fat controller stepped angrily forward. He pointed to the clock, but excited passengers swept him aside. They cheered Edward, his driver and fireman, to the echo before rushing off to get in Henry's train. Henry steamed away to another storm of cheers, but not before everyone knew Edward's story. Edward went thankfully to the shed while Duck and Boko saw to it that he was left in peace. Gordon and James remained respectfully silent. The fat controller asked Boko to look after Edward's line while he was being mended. Boko was pleased. He worked well, and now they run it together. Bill and Ben still tease him, but Boko doesn't mind. He lives at Edward's station, but is welcome anywhere, for he is now one of the family. Donald and Douglas were the last to accept him, but he often helps with their goods trains, and the other day they were heard the remark, For a diesel, yon bogles, nice sitch a bad sort of en ba bad sort of engine. That, from the Caledonian twins, is high praise indeed.